welcome to the Daily Driver Diaries. It's going to be a bit of a shorter video series where we talk about the trials and tribulations of daily driving a classic car like this one. So we'll go through all the costs, what it costs me to run, what it costs me to buy, insure, etc. What problems I have, how I fix them, if I fix them. Um, and a bit of everything really. So what we'll do, uh, in Peak District at the moment, we'll go and find somewhere nice to park up and we'll show you the car. Today's car needs a little introduction. SD1s, launched in 1976 and then winning European car at year in 1977. They had a production runner over 10 years and in that time 300,000-ish were made. They also saw a lot of success in Group A touring car with people like Tom Walkinshaw and then in British World Rally Championship with Tony Pond. You might have also been pulled up by one at some point because they were used by the police for a lot of duties a lot of people might have seen the liver run video quite a famous video a lot of people have got memories of sd ones because of those reasons good or bad <laughs> mine are mostly good my dad had them when i was growing up i learned to drive in one of these sat on my dad's knee i learned mechanics on an sd1 my dad's 2.6 seized its camshaft i think three times to the point where we had a cam carrier and a cylinder head in, in his shed completely rebuilt at all times ready to go just in case he needed it. So this car, well, this one's a Cowley Bill 85 SD1 Series 2. And you can sell, tell the differences between the Series 1 and the 2 quite a few ways, really. But the main ones, the bumpers, they had stainless steel bumpers on Series 1s, uh, recessed headlights. The D-posts at the back were, like, ribbed instead of being smooth with the Rover lettering. The boot lid was completely different. The rear windscreen was flat across the bottom. And then the interiors were just completely different, completely different instrument cluster and so on. But yeah, this one's a Zircon Blue with blue interior 2.6, so it's the straight six with the five speed LT77 gearbox. It's just, they're just a really good car. And I mean, they still look good today. They, they turn a lot of heads. People like them. Um, I bought it, I think five weeks ago now, and I've been using it daily for, for everything. I've done around 1500 miles in it, I think, and it's been largely trouble free. It has its moments. But this is, I wish I could take the credit for that, but it's because of the previous owner. He spent a lot of time and a lot of money replacing a lot of things, basically. So all the brakes are pretty much brand new. Stainless steel exhaust, the suspension has all been rebushed, new springs, new shocks. I think, yeah, he did all the cooling system. He did the. Radiator, water pump, alternator, it's been converted to electronic ignition. So underneath is, is really good. It doesn't need any welding underneath. It's it's absolutely spot on. So since buying it, I've done a couple of bits to it. Nothing major, but uh, I put the California mirrors on and the RAID steering wheel. Both of those are like a throwback to the old Group A touring cars, but there's nothing that can't be changed back in future to make it completely original. And they're just, they're just a little bit of a personal touch. So, running costs. Well, we'll start with the cost of the car. It cost me £2,400. It costs me, I think, about £110 a year to insure, something like that. And depending how I'm driving it and where I'm driving it, on the motorway it gets about 26, 27 to gallon, and around town or in the Peak District like today, I'm at around 22. But it, do, it does everything. Uh, it does the weekly shop. If we, you know, does car shows, cars and coffee mornings, it's definitely getting ready for a, a wash. And uh, it's still got the dog cover on the back seat. We take the dog out in it. In fact, the dog's roaming around somewhere at the moment. Faults? Yeah, yeah, it definitely does have some. It's a 39 year old car after all. I mean, the bodywork needs attention. As you can see, the lacquer's crazed, paintwork needs doing. And as you probably saw from the other side, the door bottoms are going. A little bit around the sunroof. 
Uh, bits like that, the wings aren't so bad. <laughs> Front wing lips are all right, but it does need a little bit. And I do plan on tackling the bodywork in future because the underside's nice, the interior's nice, and the bodywork will let it down a little bit. So I'll probably get four new doors, new bonnet, new boot lid, repair the wings. Little other faults, the central locking's got a mind of its own. Uh, it never locks the passenger door unless you unlock and lock the car like three times for some reason. The windows, the passenger window drops out of the runner if you put it more than halfway down. The driver's window just works whenever it feels like it. It's not working today. It did work the other day. But the most annoying fault is actually the fuel gauge. It runs out of fuel with when the gauge is at quarter, which has caught me out a couple of times and left me stranded. But I don't really know if you can class those as a breakdown because it ran out of fuel. It didn't actually like break down as such. So I'm not really saying they're breakdowns. <laughs> But you can forgive it a lot of this you know like when you're driving along and you're driving along in this instead of something new and boring people are waving and smiling at you letting you out of junctions i've had people come up to me chatting to me in the uh, in the petrol station we actually had someone come and knock on the door the other night just because they wanted to tell me that they used to have one and that's what i like about classic cars they bring people together and everyone's got a story to tell about them yeah so plans for this one over the coming year i've got some different wheels for it i'd like to fit those uh, i'd like to get the bodywork sorted it's got a warp dashboard and broken speaker covers same as every sd one has so i'd like to get those done and then possibly in future get it converted to fuel injection coil pack ignition etc just to make it a bit more usable there's always the option of uh, put a v8 in it like what a lot of people say but we'll see possibly so yeah, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. I'm going to upload probably monthly videos on my daily driver, outlining what I've done to it, where I've been, what faults I've found, what faults I've fixed. And I'm kind of hoping this will like, inspire people to uh, use theirs a bit more, use them a bit more daily, you know, get out in them. And if not, well, just come along with me for the journey with mine.